The condition is that I fuck. I must take over the orchestra. That's all I read. Fuck, I clicked too fast. Shit. <laughs> I fucked up already. I'm sorry. I have to take over the orchestra. Then conduct it. Then that's why I am here now. As uninterested and out of place as I am, why else would I take charge of a bunch of musicians I don't want to be around? And who probably don't want me around either. It sounds crass, but there's no use in denying it. As little as I want to do with my father's orchestra, I want everything to do with his money. Ever since I left home, I've been sinking deeper and deeper into debt. That money could change everything. Luckily, my father's condition shouldn't be too hard to fill. His will only instructed me to show up at practices, after all. It never said I actually had to do anything while I'm here. Of course, I've been exploiting that little loophole for all it's worth. Um, and Sona, er... How's the situation with hiring the new conductor? Not to rush you or anything but like that, but, um... Can we ask if you've found anyone yet? No one can replace Mr. Song, of course. But at this point, anyone with at least some experience would be better than nothing. We really can't go on without a proper... I interrupt them with an exaggerated yawn. Oh, what do you know? It's time for my nap. Wake me up when you're about to leave and try not to play too loud. I saunter over to the piano and bury my head in my arms, right on top of the keys. As usual, none of the orchestra members dare to stop me. Reluctantly, they return to their chairs and tune their instruments. After several, min after several minutes, the first strains of a Mendelssohn symphony fill the room. I try to ignore the song at first, but it becomes harder and harder to tune it out. I can actually feel my head beginning to throb from the noise. It's beautiful music, though. Ugh. I know they're new and everything, but they sound terrible. Not that I care if they bomb the concert. That's their problem. If you know how to fix it, fix it. But if they're playing so badly that I can't even fall asleep, it really pisses me off. Maybe I should try to find them a new conductor after all. I want to help. I want to help the orchestra. The orchestra's ugly. Blech. The orchestra's obviously going to keep sounding terrible if they don't have a good conductor. Guess I'll go see if I can hire one after all. Dealing with those snooty conductor types annoys the crap out of me, though. And I can't be bothered to get up right now, either. So maybe later. Satisfied with my decision, I settle in for a nice long nap. Of course, that's exactly when the door flies open with a bang. Duh, you're yelling in Chinese. I don't understand Chinese. And what was that Duh! sound? What the fuck? <laughs> that was funny. Ha. Huh? No way. I rub my eyes once then twice to make sure I'm seeing straight, but there's no doubt about it. That's the same well-dressed man I passed by earlier, only now he's standing in my doorway, barking at incomprehensible strings of Chinese at the top of his lungs. The intensity in his eyes nearly takes my breath away. Don't tell me you followed me all the way here because I blew him off before. Still smoldering, the man slams the door shut, shaking the room on its foundations. As he marches over, I leap to my feet, only to realize that he wasn't heading for me at all. Instead, he zeroes in on one of the violinists in the front who tries in vain to hide behind her music stand. Yaw. C can I help you, sir? Are you lost? Yeah. <laughs> fucking sound effect. Are you kidding me? More Chinese that we don't understand. God damn it. I need to learn Chinese then play this again. I'm s sorry. I can't understand anything you're saying. P please don't yell. Scowling, the man wrenches the bow out of her hand and slices it through the air like a madman. The violinist whimpers in fear. Hey, you can't just barge in here when we're having a practice session. The man swerves around, glaring at the, just that, at the musician who just called him out. <laughs> Fucking growls. <laughs> it's killing me. A terrified trumpet player makes a break for the exit. Without batting an eye, the man catches him with a single hand and shoves him back in his chair. More incomprehensible Chinese! Everyone immediately starts to panic. This guy is insane! Why won't he let people leave? Does anyone know what he's saying? Someone call the police, or a translator, or both! <sighs> More Chinese. Wait a sec, it sounds like he's saying something... song... Maybe he's looking for Sona. 
All eyes in the room instantly turn to me, including the crazy Chinese guys, which instantly go wide in recognition. Oh. Crap. The man closes the distance between us in just a few strides. I quickly grab the first weapons I can find. A metal music stand and an empty cello case. I might have jumped the gun, though, because the man's face softens once he reaches me. Extending his hand, he nods politely and continues talking. In incomprehensible Chinese. God damn it, dude. I don't know Chinese. Unsure of what the man is saying, I hang firmly onto my makeshift weapons. Though he seems friendly enough, I think I know why he's only talking nicely to me. Even with my piercings and dyed blue hair, I'm the only one in this orchestra with a face like his. He has yet to realize that I don't speak his language. That, on the inside, I'm just as different from him as everyone else here. It's best to get this over with quickly. Wh who is he, Sona? Is he a friend of yours? I snort despite myself. A guy like this? You're kidding, right? Then maybe he's a friend of Mr. Song's. Mr. Song is... was... The only one here who could speak Chinese, after all. There's a moment of heavy, somber silence. The Chinese guy looks expectantly at me, his hand still outstretched. As I'd thought before, he does look like the type of person my father would have associated with. It's all I can do to hold in a sigh. Okay, practice is over for today. Everyone go home. But Sona, is it really okay to leave you alone with? I said go. I'll handle this. No one wastes their time packing up. They abandon their instruments on the chairs or floor, then scurry out as fast as they can. They abandon their instruments? What the fuck? At least take your precious instruments with you. They're expensive. And delicate. And you can practice at home. Or find a practice room if there's another one. Chinese man tries to stop them, but I yank him back by the tie before he can do anything. <laughs> fucking growl! <laughs> fucking growl! You're looking for my father, right? Mr. Song? Shooting me a reproachful look, the man pries my fingers off his tie. He, caref he carefully straightens the fabric before nodding. Song. Song. I definitely heard him say Song again. There's no doubt that he knows my father. Or knew my father, if you want to be precise. If he hasn't heard anything about the accident yet, I'm not really sure how to break the news. Um, well, Mr. Song is dead, so you better go home too. Sorry. The words come out flat and curt, even for me. Not knowing what else to do, I head for the door. The man catches me by the hand before I can reach it. You're still speaking Ch I don't know Chinese, man. Song again. He didn't understand me at all, did me? Did he? Mr. Song is dead. Gone. Bye-bye. Zai Jian. Oh, whatever. Zai... I know I said that wrong. That's one of the Chinese phrases I still remember, probably because it's something I said over and over again. Goodbye. The man frowns, though I'm not sure whether it's in general confusion or at my poor pronunciation. Quite possibly the latter. I pretend I don't see the look of disappointment spreading over his face. Instead, I mimic tying a noose around my neck. Mr. Song is dead. No more Mr. Song, okay? Go home. Zai Jian. Still frowning, the man opens his briefcase. He ruffles through several sheets of sheaves of sheet music and letters before pulling out a neatly folded newspaper. I can't read the Chinese print, but the only thing that matters is the large photo on the front page. In it, my father is standing on a conductor's podium in front of an orchestra. He has one hand on the shoulder of the man next to him, a younger, happily smiling version of the man in front of me now. This guy can't be much older than me, so maybe he was a student of my father's in China. Maybe my father invited him to visit before he died. Guess no one knew to tell him what happened before he came. I wonder... Perhaps her father promised him to marry her. <laughs> that still happens in some places, I don't know. The man presses a finger against the image of my father. Song. But I can't. I don't know. Does. Right. William Song. Song Lushan. Next, he indicates his own image, then points at himself. How? 
That's you.